Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and this is tutorial number 46 and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at select lists and uh, you guys might know them as drop down lists but you know uh, <laughs> whatever they're called they're the same thing um, so let's go ahead now and actually add a select list into onto our page and the way we're going to do that is by opening a tag called select and then we're going to go ahead and close that as well so ending select and uh, now we actually have a select list on our page but it is completely blank so we're not going to be able to see anything okay now the first thing we need to do is obviously uh, maybe just give a label to this um, select list so that the user knows kind of what they're trying to select so we'll just say pick a food pick a good no pick a food okay and even though I've uh, typed this out on multiple lines it is still all going to appear on one line so don't worry about that um, this is just for uh, readability okay and now we can go ahead and actually ask the user for a food so uh, the way we're going to do that is by giving uh, them some options okay and um, we're going to have to go ahead now and open up a new option tag and then we can close that option tag over there. So this is like the basic structure for a select list. You're going to have a select list and you're probably going to have multiple option tags. Okay, but before we go any further, I do want to mention that there are some attributes that are missing from this that we really need to have. They are necessary, otherwise we're just this, this is not going to work, okay? Um, and the first thing we need to do is actually give our select list a name because whenever we are going to send data from the select list through to the server or through to another web page we need some way of identifying the data so we need some way of identifying which of these options was um, chosen by the user and the way we're going to do that is by um, giving our select list a name. So I'm going to give this a name of uh, food, okay? And then each of our options has to have a value as well, okay? And the value can be different for each option and in fact it should be different for each option, okay? And um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here because the user is not really going to be able to see this value but whatever you type in between your two option tags over here, this is what the user sees. So let's say um, we're asking the user to select some food over here. Uh, so let's give them a food to select. Okay, and I think we can start off with uh, potato chips. So potato uh, chips. And now, like I said, this is what the user sees but we still need to give this a value so that um, we can send that value through to the server and actually um, find out over there what the user has selected. So we'll go ahead and give this a value of potato underscore chips. And uh, that is our first option. So <laughs> let's uh, duplicate that. So I'm just gonna hit Control D a couple times on my keyboard. I think one more will do. So we've got potato chips, and then I think we can give the user another kind of food. So let's give them popcorn. And uh, like I said, we've got to have this correlate to that. So popcorn again over here. Um, then the next one can be peanuts. Peanuts, not pea butts. That would be kind of weird. Peanuts and peanuts and uh, you know what everything kind of starts with a P at the moment so let's jump over to something else let's say nachos um, who cares about the capital really so nachos and we'll copy that and maybe just paste that over here nachos and then pizza as well so pizza and uh, pizza okay and now we actually have each option has a value 
So we'll be able to tell on uh, the other side or wherever we send this data that uh, which which one of the options the user has selected by looking at the value and the user will be able to see which option they're selecting by looking at whatever is typed in here. So potato chips, popcorn, nachos, pizza, etc. Okay, so if we run this in Firefox right now, um, we should get a list that looks something like this. So we ask the user to pick a food and by default potato chips has been selected and if we click on that we can actually select a different item. So let's go ahead and maybe select nachos or pizza or something. Now you can see that we've selected pizza. Okay and I'm actually gonna have to go back to Notepad++ now because I wanna show you guys a few more attributes that we can add into our select list um, just to make things appear a little bit uh, differently. Okay and the first thing I'm going to show you guys is how to make something else appear as the default selected item. So remember potato chips was the first uh, selected item by default because that was the first option. But let's say I wanted peanuts to be the option that was selected by default and I could go ahead and add in uh, a selected attribute and I could set that equal to selected and that means that this peanuts attribute is going or this peanuts option is going to be the option that is selected uh, first by default so um, doesn't actually work if I just refresh the browser I actually have to run it in Firefox again and when I do that you can see that peanuts is now the option that is selected by default okay and there's actually two more attributes I want to speak to you guys about so um, if we go back here the first attribute I want to talk to you about goes up here in the opening select tag and this is called multiple so multiple and we don't have to set that equal to anything although we could say multiple equals multiple and I'm not going to do that but uh, what ha what this allows us to do is show um, more than one option at a time okay but whenever we're using this multiple attribute we need to decide how many options do we want the user to be able to see so we need to give this a size and that is the second attribute that I wanted to speak to you guys about and the size we can set equal to a, a number value of however many options we want to show to the user. So let's say I set this equal to 3. Uh, when we save this now and go back to Firefox and click refresh, this uh, uh, drop down list <laughs> isn't really a drop down list anymore as much as it is a scroll list. Um, and uh, by default peanuts is selected but we can um, go ahead now and select multiple items by holding control and clicking on more than one item so right now I have uh, peanuts, nachos and pizza all selected and potato chips and popcorn are not selected okay and if I want to unselect them just control click again uh, so that's cool and I could go ahead and change the size to 5 seeing as I've got five different options here and uh, basically what that means is we'll be showing all the options at once so uh, there's no need to scroll anymore um, we're showing all five options all at once over here in the drop down uh, well you know it's not a drop down anymore it's a select list okay so that's almost everything uh, but there is one more thing that I can show you guys and that is another element that we can put uh, inside our select list and that is an option group so we can group our options so I'm gonna go and maybe just divide these options into some groups real quick and the first one we can open up an option group tag so opt group and we can um, give that a label so I'm going to give this a label of uh, whatever we want the label for these foods to be so 
seeing as chips, popcorn and peanuts are all salty foods, I can go ahead and give this a label of salty food and that way we would have labeled all of those uh, salty foods. So let's go ahead and end that option group by ending opt group and we can do the same thing um, over here so maybe just duplicate that line instead of have it as an ending option group uh, have it as an opening option group and I'm trying to be as fast as I can so I'm going to copy that as well maybe just paste that down here and we'll give this a label of hot food because pizza and nuts nachos I guess are usually hot so save that now come back to Firefox and click refresh and now we have uh, little headers over here just to explain uh, or define a different groups of options so we've got salty food and we've got our salty foods under the salty food and we've got hot food under the hot food label and that's actually all I have for you guys in this tutorial so as always don't forget to subscribe Please feel free to leave a comment, like or share this video. It's really going to help my channel grow. And as always, I will see you guys next time.